That is such a truly professional looking mob. Oh, that one just looks spectacular. All the rear end tubing and... Oh, that one just looks beautifully curved and smooth. That one right there, that's just a classic. But you know what's really amazing about all this? Is that they were all made by the Riggs and Rods community. No professionals. No previous knowledge. All just by people doing it as a hobby. Now everybody looks at these models and they're like, Oh, well, I can't do that. I'm not even going to try. Well, that's not true because Wonder is actually easier than what everyone makes it out to be. For the first video, I'm going to be showing the five simple concepts of 3D modeling and just basically giving you a general idea of what you have ahead of yourself. First thing we're going to start off with is the basics of 3D modeling. Everything you see in the virtual world is made by polys. They're basically these little dots called the vertices connected by lines and they all form faces. And you take all these faces together and it would create the entire shape of the car. Now let's say we're going to model the front end of this charger. You would put dots all around the key points of the car where two corners meet and you'd connect them together to form all of these faces. Don't even judge my drawing skills. Here's a prime example of what I mean by putting all these little polys together to create the entire shape of a car. If you just had one entire poly going across the hood of the car, it would be completely flat. But if you have more than one poly at different elevations, then they would all smooth out together to create the shape of your vehicle or your truck or whatever you're building. Of course, next on our list is SketchUp to Blender. A lot of people use SketchUp in Rigs of Rods and the projects just don't turn out as what they should be. That's because SketchUp really isn't a vehicle modeling program. So let's say we're going to make the front end of that car in SketchUp. If you look at the toolbar and there's not many things that you can use. They're all really simple, which is why people like to stick with it. But in reality, not having a lot of tools is basically restricting you, I would say, on making stuff. So you use your push-pull tool to make that front piece. Say it was about right there. So now, instead of using an easy process like a normal modeling program would have, you have to sit here and play with this tool for a long time to try to get your model right. Look at that. I can't... Why can't I go down? That's, that's ridiculous. I mean, it's... I don't even know what to say. It's just ridiculous. Oh, oh gosh, what have I done? See, it's just pathetic. So now we're in Blender, and I'm basically going to do the same exact thing that I tried in SketchUp. I'm not going to show you how to use Blender just yet. I'm just going to prove my point here. In Blender, you can be exact with which direction you want to go, up, down, left, or right, forward, backwards, so on. So you can just move this around like that. And we're moving these main key points that I talked about with the charger earlier. You can move it that way, or you can move it that way. In SketchUp, it goes like this. But with Blender, you can choose exactly which way you want to go. And if you don't want to go exactly in one direction, you can just freehand it, which is basically what you do in SketchUp. It's kind of a pain in SketchUp, but not in Blender. Next up, I'm going to be showing the Blender user interface. It's actually not as hard as it looks. You have your recent projects, which I'm sure you don't have any. And basically, you can forget about the rest of that. So then you click in, you're like... <laughs> Blender is actually much simpler than it actually looks. I'm not going to go into huge detail right now with what uh, every little window does. But I'll just give a brief explanation and uh, just prepare you for the next videos. Right down here is where you would animate a video. You don't really need that, so you can close that. Right over here is where you would take a picture, which would be a render. Just some more miscellaneous things you're not going to use, really. Adding a texture to your square. Well, it's not really a texture. It's more of a temporary texture, such as you would use in SketchUp with your little uh, paint tool. On the top bar, you use this for uh, saving your project, importing and exporting, 
adding meshes, which are uh, pretty self-explanatory. And that's pretty much all you use for up there. In the left toolbar, you see some basic things such as um, extruding your mesh, uh, the loop, cut, and slide button. That's going to be one of your best friends. That's how you add more polys. This can either help you or hurt you because it's good for doing stuff like this. But also, let's say you add too many, then uh, it can be a big problem. It gets really messy really fast. Now let's say you want to manipulate this uh, little square that seems so hard to do before. Right mouse button clicks on these little things, or you can click and hold it. And then, let's say you want to uh, click more than one of these at once. You hold the shift button. Pretty self-explanatory. And whatever your preferences are, you can use the uh, little dot select. You can use the edge select. Or you can use entire face select. I personally use this little dot selector. And if you want to move it around, you just hold G for grab. And this is kind of aimlessly grabbing it. So use what they taught you in math class. G on the X, Y, and Z axis, which is you hold G to grab. You use the X to go left and right. Y is forward, backward. And Z is up and down. And of course, you can't really make much with one shape. So let's pull that back down. And you'd want to extrude your shape. And this is how you get the shape of your car. Of course, you would use more of a flat plane to make a car. But, just for now, well, you'd be using the shape. You can move it all around, extrude it around, have some fun with it. Endlessly making stuff. And if you want, you can even rotate it just by pressing the R button. Of course, that looks nasty, so you do X axis, Y axis or the Z axis. And yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Now let's add some color to this thing. Let's go back into object mode by pressing tab. Let's right click on this entire mesh. This right here. Let's go over to this little material tab. Let's click this button and look, we have color. Ta-da, your first edit. Yeah, it's not really much. I haven't really explained into depth what everything does yet, which I'm going to do in probably the third tutorial when I actually start to model. I don't want to throw too much uh, crap on you right now, like all the other tutorials do, and it kind of chases people away. Now on the more serious side, knowing your determination on a project really affects how everything goes. A lot of people such as myself will play Forza and, for example, I saw the Ferrari FXX, I fell in love with it and I decided I was going to make a model of it. Well in reality, halfway through the model, I was kind of bored of it because I lost that kick, if you know what I mean. That's kind of what happens with everyone. You see a lot of unfinished projects because people just simply get bored of them. So before you even create a project, just think to yourself. Am I really going to want to be modeling this in three more months, or two months, or however long it takes you? Because you just don't want to put all this effort and all these hours of work in to something that you're not even going to finish. And last but not least on the list is probably the most important thing. Just enjoy your project. You're doing it for a hobby, make it feel like one. Sit back, relax, cold can of Pepsi, music playing. Just enjoy yourself and have a lot of fun. Be sure to check out the second video on setting up your blueprints because that's probably the most important part of all of these videos. Thanks for watching. Enjoy your project.